My baby looking too good, yeah she perfect, know she worth it When she pull up all them man, them flirting And yeah she know that she a dime, call up on my line Told her baby bring it one time Girl sit down and relax, girl let me put it on you know Hello Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hey Sis Unfortunately there isn't a specific topic on today's episode But instead this is an open letter To the owner of Canis Beauty Hair Salon her name is Andrea Asari. I wanted to give her Bly. I really did. I wanted to go about things in an amicable way. And that was my intention in the first instance. But when I got a phone call that exhibited animalistic behavior, I decided, you know what? I don't want to talk to someone like this. I want to actually help Andrea. When I first encountered the owner of Canis Beauty Hair Salon based in uh, Surrey Keys, when she entered the shop like a, a big mummy, if you will, I thought she was someone maybe in her 40s, 50s. And, you know, she's been doing this for a long time. She's not really one to be, you know, front facing as in. I entered the shop, I'm the one greeting her. She doesn't have any type of training when it comes to customer service, customer relations or any hospitality training piss poor then when I did my research and I found out that she wasn't actually that old nor was she that young I said I even though I'm younger I'm gonna do what Andrea needs I'm gonna be the big sister Andrea never had so Andrea British born Ghanaian descent is a woman that I wanted to see win I definitely did I went to a hair salon I got a relaxer treatment done I then found out that I had scabs and burns now mind you at the time when I was getting my hair done I did say to the hairstylist at the time that my hair was burning I need to wash this out I was told that I should relax that it won't hurt me and she sprayed some kind of oil and attended to another person mind you Andrew was in the shop at the time from beginning to end she was even there before the stylist I think and when I did say hello to Andrea I've met this woman on at least five different occasions never has she taken an interest to say hello first um to ask me anything about my day nothing normal stuff that you'd uh, expect for customer service but then when I realized and went on their website they're very celebrity driven so if you're a celeb or an influencer with a number of followers Andrea will show you some type of respect what happened was when all of this was happening, they had people buying wigs, upwards of hundreds of pounds and expensive services. So that's where their attention led. And I was neglected. When I found out that I had the burns, I didn't react. I didn't, you know, cause a ruckus on the Monday I called. I called again. And Andrea was the one to pick up. And I said, you know what? I'm experiencing uh, some burning sensations. And I've got scabs in my hair. Have you got any guidance for the aftercare that I need to do? Very calm. Andrea failed to show me sympathy or empathy. Andrea, if you're watching this now, feel free to Google the definition of empathy and sympathy. Her first instinct of defense was to evade any sort of accountability. She's very brand driven. But the thing that Andrea fails to realize is that with a brand, the core of it is your customers and not your celebrity ones. Because you got far and few of that. We're talking about the everyday people. Don't forget them, Andrea. When you're chasing the money, don't forget them. She goes, hold on. That was her first response. And then she comes back to the phone and goes, so what you need to do? And then the phone cuts off. Conveniently. I said, you know what, let me give her the benefit of the doubt. And I called back. I went straight to voicemail. Boom. I called again. No response. If someone has told you they're experiencing burns and scabs, as far as I'm concerned, when you own a hair salon, that's pretty urgent when it comes to the list of priorities of people you need to get back to. Andrea has bragged on Instagram stories that she takes and designates two hours of her day to create a to-do list of things that she needs to attend to so she can be quote-unquote organized I wasn't on your list was I Andrea so having called I sent a whatsapp message to the business number now this number you can find I'll put it up here is actually the registered business number on google 
The only number they have is a mobile number, which I sent a WhatsApp message to. That WhatsApp message didn't have one tick, it had two ticks. Now, Andrew, in case you didn't know, when you were trying to finesse me and, you know, guy know to do guy, because you're trying to do the ring around the roses type of thing. When it has one tick, it means it's been sent successfully on my end. When it has two ticks, it means it's been received successfully on your end. So the phone was on, Andrea. I was ignored still. I left a Google review with one star, no response, explaining in depth my experience. So imagine, let's let's count this. I've called Andrea, I've called her, told her what's happened. I sent a WhatsApp message. I left a Google review. All defining the situation, nothing. Then I realized, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know how humans think. What does Andrea care about? She's self-centered. She cares about her image. She doesn't care what happens in private. That phone calls my word against hers. I went to her Instagram page. I went through my own page, Hey Sis UK, and left a comment on one of her videos. I don't think it was up to five minutes. Guess who calls me? Guess who found me, guys? It's Andrea, but she called on no caller ID. And the first thing she goes and says to me is that, how dare I, in a sense of, why would I leave a message? I don't know, Andrea, because I've been trying to look for you. It's been two days. Her concern was that I've embarrassed her. Again, didn't display any empathy, didn't display any sympathy. Let me play you what happened. <clears throat> now, this is someone that doesn't acknowledge or care to know what I do, what I am. And the first thing she said was, Yezzy. Andrew, I didn't know you knew my name. You never address me as, as my name when I come to your shop. I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm shocked you knew my name, Andrea. You, you, the fact that you found my number to call me back. She said to me that I'm a businesswoman and I have a platform. Does that mean I should give you a bly? In this situation, I'm a customer, Andrea. You are the business owner. You should treat me accordingly as a customer. Why should I put my businesswoman hat on? And I'm not just the businesswoman that owns a platform. I own a business too, a registered business, and so do you. According to Companies House, you own three businesses. In 2013, you incorporated Canis Undiscovered Beauty Limited. In 2017, you registered Canis Beauty Limited, and then it got dissolved in 2019. And then you decided to register Canis Beauty CIC. I almost fell off my chair. Andrea, you got a CIC. What philanthropic work have you done? What charitable giving have you done? Andrea, what are you up to? Now, if you know what a CIC is, it's a community interest company. What interest do you have in your local community, Andrea? You're Miss International with your international branches. So she has three registered businesses. She has a clothing line. She does branches. Uh, what else is Andrea? She's also, I think you're registered. Ah, oh, that's what you are. You're a regulated insurance specialist advisor, the owner of Wardrobe Warehouse HR. With all these hats that you wear, it must be quite the financial burden that you have to have to do all these things. I didn't put you in this situation of a financial burden. So when you come to your shop without so much as a smile, remember that I didn't put you in that position. It wasn't me. Go and face the person that's put you in that financial burden because it's not me. I asked myself many times, does she even have an MVQ level qualifications or her beauticians when it comes to doing hair? This woman called me after I told her what I was experiencing, after I told her that I'm trying my best to remain calm in this situation and all I wanted was a bit of aftercare. And all she could think about was evading any accountability. Let's play it. Nothing. Like, even if we just send a text, even on the phone, that's why I've had to call you off a different number because the phone I even the work phone I used to call you, we can't even find where the phone is. Let's pause that. The first time I called Andrea, she answered the phone. Then she told me that the phone got cut off, that she didn't cut the phone, that the battery died. Andrea, how are you wearing Van Cleef bracelets unless they're fake? Sporting designer bags and wearing wigs to your bum crack. 
but you can't invest in a landline for your business. If you need a quote, babe, I can give you a quote to BT because my business has a landline. There's also a mobile line for out of hours. There's also an app. Write this down, Andrea. It's called 8x8. You can install it on your phone, every mobile phone you have access to. So whenever phone calls come into your landline or virtual number, hey, I don't know if you knew that one, Miss Boss Brunch, it can come through to you. How are you going to be a business owner of three registered businesses and you're operating off one mobile line that you've now lost? Let's keep going. Are we detecting the tone of a business owner to a customer? You would have thought I'm the one that violated her. She gives me schoolgirl vibes where it's like, I heard you were chatting shit about me. Now what? Now what? Now what? We're all grown women. Andrew, grow up. This is not how you call a customer. I'm a businesswoman, I have a platform, and I'm a business owner, Andrea. If someone called me about burns, if a customer had a complaint, I will use every instantaneous means available to me to get back to them. So if you called me back, which you alleged that you did, and I have access, every time I book an appointment with you, you have the bare minimum of my name, my number, and my email address. You could have sent me a text message. You could have sent me a WhatsApp. You could have sent me an email saying, hey, Yazzie, don't know what happened to the line that got cut off. But when you get a chance, let me know when I can call you back or you can call me back. Or here's about three bullet points to let you know about the aftercare to take care of your scabs. Why are you capping for? I write the comments. Hello? I should have given more time for there to be a response. Regardless. Hold on. So, let's continue with this one, yeah? Using three different platforms. Hold on. Why wouldn't I write a comment, Andrea, on your business socials? Because you only care about how people see you. You don't actually care about operating a good business. Maybe if you weren't managing a, a limited company, a CIC, running a clothing line, also doing your boss brunches, boss bay brunches, maybe you'd have time to focus on your forward-facing business. Maybe. I don't know. I should have given more time for there to be a response, regardless of using three different platforms for instantaneous messaging. So let me break this down. Instantaneous, because, Andrew, that might not be in your vocabulary. I, I, based on the way you spoke to me, I don't think it goes very far. Instantaneous means instant. We are in a day and age where people crave 
instant responses. We've built infrastructure for instant responses. If I wanted you to respond to me within eight to 10 working days, I would have sent a carrier pigeon, but you have made available Instagram. Instagram comes with DMs. You've made available WhatsApp. You've made available a mobile. Do you know what mobile is? Mobility. All of these things require urgent responses, but you're complaining that I didn't give you enough time to get back to me who has had to be taking neurofen, ibuprofen and paracetamol, anything available to manage to go to sleep because my scalp is in pain. My scalp is burnt. And when I came to you as a professional to say, what is the aftercare? You don't even give standard aftercare whenever hair's being done. I've seen you with clients. You couldn't give a damn. You, you come up in the, the place, you don't do any hair, you count your bundles and then you go. You're not ready to work. Not really. And because I asked you to help me, because my hair was burnt in your establishment, you're upset. So I called this woman for aftercare, something that I would have thought if you had a basic MVQ level two in hairdressing, you could give. But it's like you're shaking. It's like you have to go and Google it before you could tell me. The phone died. You lost the phone. Telling me I'm a businesswoman. Why are you telling me something about myself I already know? I can't exchange words with you. That's why I write this open letter to advise you because I want you to do better, Andrea. I actually want you to do better for yourself because your life right now is a mess. How long did you give us the response to asking? I haven't accounted for the hours, but if that's what you're but if the premise of all of this is basically that I didn't give enough time, even though I called, I called back again, I messaged on WhatsApp. Can I ask you a question, Yazi? Sorry, yeah, quick question. Did you see my missed call? No, I didn't see your missed call. Okay, I'll send you a screen grab showing that I called you back twice. Okay. She didn't send me the screen grab <laughs> of her calling me. Uh, she interrupted me while I was talking. I'm a customer exhibiting pain and you're cutting me off and this is what i ask andrew have you received customer relations have you received uh hospitality training and the funny thing is i didn't keep coming to that salon because of her because andrew your attitude stinks every time i go into that salon your attitude stinks if you're not going to be somewhere happily don't be there because you're wearing five hats right now i didn't put this financial burden in your life i stayed for the woman who did my hair because she's genuinely a nice person. What happened that day, I don't know. Maybe she was under a lot of pressure. But it wasn't for you. Because you're rude. You're, you're generally rude. And you literally picked an industry that requires you to show up and show out with your personality and customer relations to be A1 every time you walk into that shop. But no, you're not ready to work. You got wigs to your bum crack, sporting Van Cleef, wearing designers, but you can't invest in a landline. That I can't fathom. Let's keep going. Because when I picked up on your attitude, I said, oh, it's not you and I that will be exchanging madnesses today. I've grown up. Unlike you, Andrea, I've actually grown up. I can also send a screenshot of my two attempts of calling. I did make attempts... When I have it didn't go through, house. right? Okay, go ahead. Cut me off again. No, I'm sorry, okay, it didn't go through when you called the second attempt? No, it didn't go through, but it's voicemail. Yeah, because our battery was dead. We did not deliver and cut the phone or cancel the call. The battery of the phone died. We literally was offline in regards to calls. Okay. The issue I'm highlighting is aftercare, where I don't feel, in my opinion, that enough t attempts were made considering the situation that I'm dealing with now, which is scabs. But if the premise of this conversation is basically to say that I've been unfair to you, then that's fine. No, the premise of the conversation is to say to you, we wasn't, we wasn't made away until just now. So in regards to what you're complaining about, it's perfectly fine. Of course, after care, you're free to complain. We get clients calling us, asking us all the time how they take care of their hair after they leave the salon. That's never an issue. What I'm explaining to you is, in regards to you posting the message, you can't get us to pick it up the second that you posted it. Or know what exactly what you're you know what the banter is? Andrea, why do your customers keep having to call you for aftercare? As a stylist, as a specialist, as an expert, why aren't you giving notes of aftercare then and there, either during the service or after? Why are people having to call you all the time? 
This doesn't make any sense. This is common sense. It's common business practices from one business owner to another pattern up. I don't know. I don't know this woman. If you see the way she was dropping yezzy, yezzy, yezzy on the phone, I thought, wow. Wow. You should have done your due diligence beforehand, boy. What exactly has happened? All I got was the beginning of your conversation of you saying that you've got scabs in your scalp. And if you can recollect the conversation, I started to explain what can be done next. Then the phone got disconnected. I you jumped on another call and the phone got disconnected because when you called the work line, I was actually in the middle of a meeting. So I told them to hold on when I pick up the call and deal with you. Every day meeting, meeting, meeting. All these meetings, but your business is falling apart, Andrea. Every day you're telling me about meetings. I'm a customer. I don't give a toss about what meeting you've been in. Do you know that she's a regulated insurance advisor? Sorry, let me read this properly. She's a regulated insurance specialist advisor. This woman actually speaks to people for a living. As a day job. She speaks to people for a living. Her attitude stinks. She speaks like a child, like a girl in secondary school. I'm just getting flashbacks, flashbacks. Obviously, my reaction back then for that kind of attitude would have been different. I'm an adult now. When you see her, it's like she romanticizes business. You name a brunch, the Boss Babe Brunch International. You parade around in threads and clothing, make romanticizing business. You've bragged about losing and making. No, you said that you made... Two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and you lost it. Incoming, outgoing. Your books are are a shambles. You've had compulsory strike offs numerous times on Companies House. You're a disorganized babe. The phone died. The phone was lost. Whether it's lies or the truth, either end is scary. Let's keep going through this phone call because you see me. I don't know if you're a Christian, Andrea. By the way, you're talking to me. Definitely not. Uh, your spirit when I enter the shop is low, so I suggest you read your scripture. I have a response for fools because the scripture talks about it. It says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 14 to 35. Wisdom is worth more than silver. It makes you richer than gold. Wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. You can wear all the jewelry you want, but you need to upskill yourself and your staff. Let's carry on with this conversation. My open letter to Andrea Asari, the business owner of Canis Beauty. Nothing to do with... Um, pass the blame or putting blame here. No, of course, if you want your after care information, you can receive that in abundance. That's not a problem. But I'm just trying to explain to you is we, we wasn't even aware there was a problem. You weren't aware there was a problem? I left a one star Google review. You didn't see that. I sent you a WhatsApp. You didn't see that. I called you twice. You didn't see that. Even when she called me, she told me, What's the problem? Is it that you're illiterate and you have no ability to read or write? How can you ask me what the problem is if I've told you on three different occasions what the problem is? <laughs> You're not aware. But when I left that comment on your social media, you knew what was going on, huh? When your peers could see you getting shamed, you knew where my number was. Someone else. There's one person, one platform, one person managing all of that. And she's managing other things. It's when she has picked it up, it's literally me calling you right now. And I think Gabby has been in contact with you, if I'm not mistaken, trying to sort it out. I haven't had any contact from anybody because the thing that I know right now is that after the phone was cut out, had I not WhatsApped and sent a message on social media, would anyone have actually reached out to me in regards to what's going on? Like the severity of what I'm going through, would it have been considered had I not on my end had to pursue different realms to get someone to be in contact with me. I don't think you understand. No one had a good mood you. If it had gone on lo- like a day or two, fair enough, and no one had picked up your message, fine, but you literally called me. You didn't send us an email. You didn't send us a message. You called me in mid-conversation of explaining what had happened. The line got disconnected, in which I called you back twice. So if not for seeing your messages, I do not know what the issue is. You're the severity. You haven't explained any severity. The only way you've explained it is by going on Google and going on Instagram to post it. But either way, that's neither here or there. What you need to do, let me just get to the point of sorting out your hair because you have an issue with your hair. What needs to happen is... At this point, I was already switched off. The customer service was piss poor. She spoke to me like a gangbanger. Um, 
over the phone anyway. She had that, she had Vim over the phone. Um, and I already knew I would never come back. And any opportunity I get, I would tell anyone that your business is crap, that you are a crap person and that you're a crap businesswoman. No, woman's even a compliment. You're a crap business person. You need to get retrained. You need to get your knowledge up because you speak like someone uneducated. I'll be very honest with you. Um, I'm, I'm, you know what it is overall, Andrea. I didn't want to do this, but you, you disappointed me. Like I'm actually disappointed by you. The only reason I even, I'm a patron of your business. The only reason I patronized you was not because of you. It was because of the person that did my hair, and I have no problem with her. I was even going to do it on a calm one, on the basis of her. But because you were the buffoon to call me, this is why I've gone to these lengths. That review will be staying there. Add anything to it when your Mind you, she berated me like I was one of her children for about five minutes before she actually gave me aftercare advice. So I'm a customer. I made a complaint. She berated me about how I've embarrassed her. Who, who cares if I haven't slept well? Who cares if my hair is burning and I've got scabs and bits of hair are clumped together? I'm going to insert a video of some of the clumping. Who cares? Um, it's about if I've ruined Miss Andrea Asari's brand. Because that's all you care about. I mean, Andrea, the thing about you is wear a mask. You wear a mask when you parade around um, packaging yourself to live a lifestyle you don't live. But at least wear a mask with your customers. Act like you care. Get your thesaurus out. Come on. Turn the pages to the word empathy. Show a bit of that to your customers. They'll keep coming. It's called recurring customers. You can do all the brunches you want, and which makes me laugh because you're literally blind when it comes to business. So there are vulnerable women actually prescribing to your brunches where it's the blind leading the blind. Andrea Asari, you haven't got a clue about how business runs. And if you want some advice, I'd be more than happy to provide you with some because believe it or not, I still want you to win, girl. I still want you to win. Let's keep going. evade any accountability now mind you this is a total of a six minute conversation not once did she say sorry not once did she say how are you feeling not once did she try to remedy the situation from the top of the phone call by saying i'm so sorry you feel this way how are you feeling i want to make sure that we take care of you when are you available for us to fix this remedy andrea if you don't know what remedy means i mean let me wore it down for you because you simple like that um what i mean is that how do you fix the mess up that was caused in your establishment that's what i mean you have to rewash your hair and try to see if we can get rid of the scabs and see if it's an itch scab or a burn scab because right now i wouldn't know but i have gone back to ask um the person trying to protect your security camera to see how long you were sitting for, how quickly you were um, washed out, if that makes sense. So they need to go back to go and check the security camera to check the time of process then because it's quite shocking that you had relaxes with us like a good three or four times and we've never had that issue. You see her evading the situation again. I'm a customer, Andrea. You do not go out of your way, not like making it evident that you're trying to evade accountability because accountability is what gains you customer loyalty. No one's perfect. People mess up. People fall short of expectations. But had you been accountable, you would have had a customer for life who would have raved on about you. But no. You said you want to check the security cameras to see how long I was sitting you were in the shop when I was getting my hair done. You were giving me quotes for bundles because I was going to go to you guys for my wedding. Obviously, that's not going to happen. My bridesmaids were going to come to you guys. That's not going to happen. 
You're going to check the security camera to see how long I was sitting in the shop. You were there. You weren't doing anything than other than coming in like you always do, marching in with your big mommy attitude and stature, counting bundles, and then you sit down faffing around doing nothing while you make your staff take on more than they can actually manage. Hence why there was a rushing around in the shop that day. Even my appointment got rescheduled why did you reschedule my appointment with no explanation I was moved up earlier in the day were you trying to accommodate for one of your celebrity clients or a client that was spending over the odds because that's how you move that that is how you move let's keep going I remained calm and one thing about you Andrea that I need to teach you here is that when someone wants to de-escalate a situation you have to calm yourself down I don't know what's making you angry in your life I don't know what brings out so much anger that you can't be soft and feminine I don't know who did that to you but I suggest you work on tapping into your femininity and being calm in nature aggression it doesn't suit you you're already like that calm down um yeah let's keep going because when I came being extra calm your common sense should have ticked in your head like raw she's mad calm maybe I should see this as a sign to come down to her level and calm down as well but what i did is i showed the madness in you makes sense unless you have had that issue before to be honest with you i'm quite saddened by this exchange and just the overall energy from the beginning of the phone call but if i if i can be quite honest with you of course you can i've explained it thoroughly on every platform i can imagine exactly what's happened whatever you feel that you need to do on your end feel free to do but i feel like the tone has already been set moving forward so this is basically just rounded up my overall experience no problem thank you very much for your time Yazi. All right, then. and at that point she knew she messed up now imagine you're a businesswoman you have a platform why would you do that how long have you given us to get back to you if there was money to be made you'd know how to take my money quickly so stop acting up she then goes on google to send a message talking about howevers and this isn't the case but anyway um we're gonna be sending you a refund had you entered the phone call and this is the teachable moment andrea you should have done this bing bing hi yezzy you see my tone soft feminine I, i'm not carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders hi yezzy sorry who is this oh it's andrea of, of canis beauty the owner i saw your message on social media i'm so sorry about what's gone on with your hair i've spoken to the stylist at the time and we're really surprised at what's happened but how are you feeling empathy empathy and sympathy um i know we spoke earlier identifying my attempts to be in contact i know we spoke earlier and the phone got cut off i'm so sorry about that it's been a bit hectic but um let's sort out this aftercare so what you can do at home for the time being is xyz in the meantime let me know what day is best for you for you to come into the shop we're going to wash your hair out sort it out and then manage it from there we'll give it a couple weeks as a break and next time you come in it's on us that's how you remedy the situation but you're too busy with your money grabbing and your anger and the fact that you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders that you can't even tap into your feminine energy and be a effing caregiver something an instinct that comes naturally to women you came on an animalistic vibe trying to blame me and evade accountability at that point i would have done this oh wow thank you so much andrea i'm um, just to let you know i did leave a google review because i was a bit frustrated as you can imagine with the whole situation but i'm going to delete it and i really appreciate how you've gone over and above to sort this out for me and your customer stays thank you so much that's all you had to do but no you wanted to bark like a dog let's round up the tape one more time You wanted to bark like a dog. Nothing. And even if we just send a text, even on the phone, that's why I've had to call you off a different number because the phone I even, the work phone I used to call you, we can't even find 
fine with the phone is. After I tried to call you back yesterday, it's not like if someone deliberately is me. We've never had an issue. Gabby always does your hair. She takes her time. She loves doing your hair. But even Gabby's been caught off guard. And Gabby thought it was a totally different situation. I've had to say to Gabby, take your time and read through the message. Our problem's not with anything else, but with the way you administer the service. And she's absolutely shocked. Because she's never been in a situation like this or had a problem like this. And I totally get it. Of course, you're allowed to complain. Freedom of speech, you're free to complain. But at least give us a, t- a chance to rectify what's happened or get back to you or pick up the message. Do you know what I'm coming from? You're a businesswoman. You have a platform. So you know exactly how it feels if someone didn't give you the chance to respond and then all of a sudden goes on your social and writes a comment. A little word of advice, Andrea. If you're going to insist on being the face of your business, I mean, your face is plastered all over the website. You are a model time and time again. You have to bear the brunt of being the face of your business that is front facing to the public, to the actual general public. Um, I hope you learn from this situation. I do hope for your own sake, and I mean this sincerely, that you find peace in your life, that you're able to be calm in situations and not come in and bark like a dog you lack a grace you have as much grace as a bull in a china shop find grace read your scripture and i'm not saying that as a condescending way but i feel like if you tap into that more you pray more you would have had peace in your life you would have prayed before you made that con- that phone call to me you would have had wisdom enter you before you started doing all of that and to any business owners out there let this be a lesson that you never know who you're talking to always step with your best foot forward when it comes to business and represent yourself if you're going to be the face of your business if you're going to actually speak to people customers be ready to take time and study who you're talking to so you don't end up ruining yourself or making a bad impression on anyone the person and the business that i'm talking about is andrea asari of canis beauty it's a hair salon based in surrey keys right next to the station cute little place that's about it oh another advice to you andrea Uh, with your clothing line i find it very funny that you would actually as a business owner you would actually go into an industry that we know about 47 percent of them don't even survive past the first five years of business and it takes a lot of seed money to start a clothing line hope that goes well for you i really do oh these i think i've basically touched on all the points it's just a shame man as a black woman you know how important our hair is to us and you acted like you didn't give a damn you made me know that you didn't give a damn about that you should really get to know your customers find an interest in them the salon is a place of therapy it's therapeutic that's where you get to know people but you seem to only acknowledge me when i use my platform to talk to you on your platform it's a shame you're not a very warm or welcoming spirit it is a shame every time i've walked into that shop you look absolutely miserable don't know what's going on in your life but i do hope it gets better like i said i didn't ask you to take on any financial burden in your life so if it's killing you that much i suggest you get the help you need i mean had you been calm in your demeanor I would have just forgotten this whole situation, deleted reviews, never made this video, but here we are. Because at the end of the day, I shouldn't have to chase you for aftercare. You allege all the time that I'm busy, I'm in and out of meetings, in and out of meetings. According to your books and your accounts that you filed on Companies House, you have a micro business. You are a micro sized company. If you don't know what that means, it means that you have 10 and under when it comes to staff. You're not that busy, Andrea. Andrea, what is your name? I don't even know. I'll call you Mrs. Asari, yeah? That's how we should uh, we should address Big Mommy. Anyway, see, girl, yes, yes, uh, being unapologetically myself, talking about the uncomfortable conversations that we need to have to be comfortable. Let us all make sure that Andrea, in the words of Tyra Banks, I was rooting for you. 
we were all rooting for you. But we sure the best, baby girl. It's your girl, yes, yes, uh, you've been watching or listening another episode of Hey Sis. Stay blessed. Call up on my line, tell the baby bring it one time. Yeah. Girl, sit down and relax. Girl, let me put it on you, no time for chit chat. Because she moved like a queen and I like what I see and I want to get more of that. Oh, I am dressed and he blows success. Lay down as you decompress. Come mind and forget the stress. Got the nine to five because he trying to change his life. He can't help it but to show his bad side. So for me, just see when he want that good ride. Follow my stride, you know you want a good time. Any card, I know it won't decline never. You know how to please me, never tease me Keep me in Givenchy, laced in Gucci Quick, take the keys and drive to Chelsea uh-huh. Eat a scalini, uh-huh. all the linguini He ordered the chateau